Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. Today, we have a lot of things crypto to cover and we're going to start this video out by covering the current market situation. Then I want to head over into a slight update on the Ripple v SEC lawsuit from a couple of days ago that is still very relevant. And then we're also going to quickly dive into what's coming up next. We're going to be covering the fact as to what Grayscale thinks about a Bitcoin spot ETF, not so much a fact depending on how you view it. The fact to the matter is that a Bitcoin ETF is surely going to be coming. We're going to talk about that. There's a new theory that heavy institutional accumulation is happening right now as $1.2 billion worth of Bitcoin left Coinbase in a single day. I definitely have to cover that article for y'all as well. We have a little piece of news about Decred, a crypto that I've not covered in years, but I'm a small holder of and I thought, hey, I might make somebody happy with this news as it actually brings up a couple of very important, I would say, things or rather insights or crypto pieces that as a crypto veteran you watch that might bring certain amount of gains in the future. It's just something I really want to share with you guys, some insights, not necessarily about the crypto themselves. And then there's just one little fun article over at the end about a fugitive Chinese billionaire claiming this crypto will overthrow Beijing. Just some fun thoughts about it that I want to share. Without further ado, I have quickly moved myself to the other side so we can more easily hopefully see this right here. Bitcoin today is hovering at 39.2 thousand, Ethereum just below 3,000 at 2,900, BNB at 400 bucks and XRP at 74.4 cents. Solana at a about $100, Cardano at about 90 cents, Terra Luna at about 84 and Avalanche at about 75 and that is our top 10 for today. I would say things are not doing so well. The only one in the top 10 that's actually up is Terra at about 3.4%. The rest of the crypto market is going down in the single digits with XRP going down minus 5% and Bitcoin going down minus 3. I just thought about the fact that I shouldn't say minus if I'm already saying that it's going down, but it's okay. In terms of trend, I already described it to you guys, but I would say that the Bitcoin price is still, generally speaking, following the indices as the S&P and NASDAQ. I think it's quite clear to any observer that the S&P and NASDAQ look pretty freaking similar. I wouldn't say it's easy to actually feel the of the one or the other like the, to see the difference basically in the Bitcoin index. It isn't a one to one match, but we can clearly see that this little dip that basically started from March or so that we can also see that over on the Bitcoin price. And so I am also saying I do think whatever is pushing the S&P and Nasdaq down is the same cause for Bitcoin. And obviously, whatever is pushing Bitcoin down is pushing all coins down. And just a slight little look on the charts, guys, you already know. But we broke down yet again. What we're facing right now is some critical support as we're back into this demand zone for Bitcoin. And it depends on how we're going to react over the next couple of days, specifically hours, but let's say days on whether or not we'll continue to go down or come back up. Honestly, since we've broken down, I'm expecting Bitcoin to do or at least try, maybe like 37.5 or so thousand dollars. It's just my honest expectation. But hey, these videos are not financial advice. I'm not a thousand percent sure where we're going to head. And to be honest with you, I'm a little bit cautious and a little bit careful. And I'm investing less um, than I normally do. For example, if I understand or I think that a bull run is going to be coming up soon, I put crazy amounts of money into all these different pre-sales. I'm just going berserk on it. But in cases of this where we're not sure that crypto is going to break down yet again. I try to get rid of a couple of coins and try to go for some altcoins that I do believe have a good multiplier potential or dive in with little amounts of money, just you know, just relatively little amounts of money. Uh, and that's just my strategy for right now as well. It's just a time of uncertainty. We don't know if we're going to come and climb right back up or if we're going to break down further. And I would honestly expect us to hit a level lower at about 37,000 or so as a first little retest. But it can also be a slight little fake out here as we've just broken towards the downside. And it wouldn't be too crazy if it's just this one single day below it before moving right back up as we've seen before. But it also wouldn't be too crazy if right now this 40,000 barrier is going to act as a heavy resistance or we're going to face down from yet again in the near future, like for example, tomorrow or the day afterwards. Then in regards to the lawsuit, this is actually rather interesting. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm still not sure. Like uh, the lag here, you can see, like it's a little bit laggy. 
if I am trying this video out, um, you know, without actually pressing the record button, everything is fine. But here I can see it's a little bit laggy. So I think it's better to do no camera for right now. I, I, I don't know how to fix it, guys. I just got a new MacBook a little while ago and still have this lag issue. So I'm, I'm not sure if one of my cords is broken or so because it's also using like 75% of the CPU. <laughs> what is doing that? I have no idea. Maybe it's a crazy thing on my computer. It could be. It's brand new, though. All right. So SEC. This is from April 15th. Reason I haven't covered it, as you've seen, I didn't post any videos for a little bit. The SEC has filed a request for an extension of time to file its objection to Magistrate Judge Nedburn's ruling on the motion for reconsideration of the DPP ruling. The SEC is raising new privilege assertions, and the SEC says that the defendants are prepared to proceed to summary judgment without a ruling on the Hinman emails and documents, which I think is rather funny. So... Again, guys, this is not from today. This is from a couple days ago. I just haven't covered it yet, and I want to get it out to you guys. The reason I'm saying that this is very important, very critical, and very funny is because the SEC is trying for yet another delay. You guys understand how annoying that is, right? Another delay. <laughs> Why? Well, because they're basically asking for themselves to not object yet to the judge's denial of a reconsideration motion. Let me explain it a little bit easier for all of you. The SEC has a lot of emails that they're hiding. The judge said, give those emails over to Ripple. The SEC was like, nope, let's reconsider this. Let's do this all again. Let's, Because I don't think we actually have to give it over. The judge said, nah, you do have to give it over. I looked over it again. You have to give it over. I don't want to actually look further. Give it over. And now the SEC, of course, has another chance to basically appeal and... Um, object to the decision the judge made, but they don't want to do that just now. They want to say, you know what? We don't know exactly when we want to go back on this specific issue. We're, we're fine to just continue on with everything while we're not figuring out this issue, which is one of the most stupid things I've heard in a good while. Because remember, how can you go to summary judgment properly without having information on the other side? Ripple says we need these emails to get further into everything. The judge was like, yeah, I agree with you. But now the SEC is like, you know what? We don't think you made the right choice, so reconsider it. She's like, no, I don't think you deserve uh, all of that. I think I think I still stand by my initial point. And they're like, well, we, we, we want to give you a good reason as to why you should look over it again and why we are right. But let's just go on without doing that and, and just leave Ripple in the middle of everything. I don't know. I, I feel as if this is one of the crazier things they've written thus far. But, hey, it's just me. Now, uh, Stuart Alderoti of Ripple also had an interesting comment on all of this. Give it a second to load in right here. He said, Imagine if in civil enforcement cases, we also abided by the Brady Rule, which in criminal cases requires prosecutors to share all information in their possession that could help or even exonerate the defendants. At the end of the day, I personally think this is what should be there. At the very least, the SEC should have the admoni admonition of its own chair that firms should not use lengthy privilege reviews to delay responding to routine document requests. <sighs> I, 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 I don't know why they're going against their own principles every single time when it comes to this lawsuit. It's so crazy. James also posted something else. Actually, just five minutes ago, Financial Services Committee GOP raises concerns regarding recent SEC rulemakings on digital assets. And I think this is not about Ripple's lawsuit, but it might be rather important. Purely because every single rule that's made on cryptos is important for all of us. I think you guys can uh, agree with that and understand that, right? And apparently, Republican leader Patrick McHenry and sub-IPECM Republican leader Rep. Hausenha raise concerns with the impact of recent SEC rulemakings on the digital asset ecosystem, including DeFi, in a public comment letter. Huh. This is very interesting. This is very interesting. They also reiterate their demands for SEC Chair Gary Gensler to allow for robust input from stakeholders by providing adequate public comment periods for rulemakings of at least 60 days. So multiple different sources now, let's call it that, or just representatives, I guess, are looking into what the SEC is doing and are like, mm, not sure that's the right call. Not sure that what you're doing right there is smart or the right way to do it for the people. So one thing I don't want to show you guys right now necessarily, but want to bring up, 
is for example how over in the UAE, XRP, for example, is also declared a non-security. It's already fine. And again, guys, I'm not saying that every country should stay to the bat, just say, hey, it's fine. But I do believe that if you're going to make a determination that it's not fine, for example, be able to base it upon rules that are quote unquote new or try to figure out a framework as soon as possible that is reasonable. With the UAE, they just went for a completely new crypto framework, framebook or whatever you want to call it. And with the US, they've done it like, well, we have had rules since 9030. Let's keep those and try to use them for crypto. If it doesn't work, then uh, we'll just sue them and because we have to make it work or something like that. And the rules... They're not necessarily being made just quite yet. We, we've just seen some small pieces of guidance, but hey, can we see William Hinman's speech as guidance? I don't know. And generally speaking, it's taken a sweet ass time because with Biden's executive order, things will still take a couple of years most likely to really get to some conclusion. So yeah. We write to express our concern with two recently proposed SEC rulemakings and the impact of such rules that they have on digital assets. Um, but I still have to get a little bit further into it then. Ah, so there's a couple of different pieces. Further definition of as a part of a regular business in the definition of dealer and government securities dealer, insufficiency of the rulemakings as a as a whole, and amendments to the Exchange Act regarding the definition of exchange regulation, ATS for ATSs, that trade U.S. government securities, NMS stocks, and other securities. Let's just put down that it's very interesting. And again, what the SEC right now is doing is leaving Ripple in a little bit of a... Um, nope, I've been thinking for about a minute, can't think of the best word to say. They're just doing some real shenanigans. You know, it's just stupid ass stuff, let's call it that. Of just saying, hey, I described it to you guys all just now, right? We don't want to give anything to you. The judge is saying we should, but we don't want to. So let's just go on without us giving it because we don't want to. It's ridiculous, literally. If. Oh, I hope I, I hope I had my mic, or at least I hope I was recording that little segment. Let's just come back and I'll just summarize it real quick for in, in case I didn't have my microphone on or I stopped recording. Just about the Bitcoin ETF, I honestly am a thousand percent sure it's gonna come. The only question in my mind is, am I going to be sure Wait a minute. Oh no, I guess the only question is when, not if. We're all sure it's gonna be coming. It's only about when the SEC thinks it's gonna be safe, but that's it, you know, it's, it's general determination. There's no question about it though, that it's eventually going to come. And the question only is in our minds, is it gonna pump the price? Logical that institutional demand will increase the price, but it's also a slow grind. So most likely it will be a buy the rumor, sell the news type of scenario, like we've seen multiple times in the last couple of years. Talking about this slow grind, $1.2 billion, that's a lot of money, of Bitcoin leaves Coinbase in a single day, signaling heavy institutional accumulation. So this again is something which I really want you guys to pick something up on, which is don't trust the articles. Don't. It is always about net flow. Leading U.S. crypto exchange Coinbase has recorded a major outflow of 30,000 Bitcoin leaving the exchange for cold wallets and custody wallets over on Friday. Crypto Quant CEO Ki Young Yu told to Twitter to call the trend 30,000 BTC float out from Coinbase today. Institutional buys might be the big narrative again because the executive order did not create any hurdle. He added that while institutional buyers may have moved assets to cold wallets, this figure is not significant. He states that the latest move was the movement of assets towards Coinbase custody wallets for OTC deals from institutions, which again is something we cannot really see. So them saying that is a nice thing because again, it's really hard for us to spot all of that. Uh, then again, what I want you guys to pick up on is this is a title. This is a very heavy title. It's like, oh wow, okay, 30,000 Bitcoin leaving exchange is so much money. We've not taken a look at the inflow though. Let's say hypothetically speaking that I grab a million dollars from a wallet and I put it into Coinbase. And then from Coinbase, I also take it back out. What happened then? All that happened is I created $1 million worth of inflow and $1 million worth of outflow, right? If we're gonna say, in what way can they check it? And what way can they know? Unless we're saying, okay, but the, the, the money that's been transferred in within 24 hours, we do not count as an outflow. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Why not, right? Why not? That wouldn't make, because it's out of Coinbase. So then the numbers wouldn't line up. So they have to. But even if, then it could literally be that one person puts it in and the other person takes it out. 
in the same day. So let's say I put a million dollars in, some other guy takes a million dollars out, nothing really happened, right? It just depends on your perspective, but it also depends on what exactly they're doing, and we can't know that. So that's why I'm always saying be cautious with news like this, because usually it's a little bit biased. Be afraid. Well, of course, don't don't you know don't poop your pants afraid. I'm just saying be cautious a little bit when reading articles like this. You, you know what I mean. Then I just quickly mentioned this article about decred, right? And then really quickly before we move on, I want to tell you guys, if you're looking for a crypto exchange, just if, I would honestly recommend KuCoin if you're looking to trade altcoins. I've said it before, I use Bybit all the time for some leverage trading, right? It is what it is. That's the one that I use. I even wear a t-shirt with them right now. But I've honestly found that if you're looking for trading altcoins, buying altcoins, that KuCoin is literally the best exchange out there. Some people might think of Binance purely because they are so big, but it's about the quantity and about the different kinds of altcoins that they have. I've just noticed when I was stacking up on my metaverse portfolio, KuCoin was my best friend because they had everything and it wasn't on Binance, wasn't all the other places. And so I honestly from the bottom of my heart recommend you guys to at least check it out a link will be down below and there'll be a couple of xrp bonuses for some lucky new signups so make sure you go ahead and check it out i'm also going to be discussing another cool bonus for some people that have signed up so uh yeah i got a bit distracted let's move on though so the cred the 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 crypto itself i'm not necessarily that excited about but read the title Decred price soars 45 percent in the in the day or one day three weeks before a major hard fork I want you guys to remember what I just said earlier in the video, buy the rumors, sell the news. You know how many people do this, guys? It is insane. The takeaway from this is there's so many cryptos out there which have some major upgrades going for themselves, even Ethereum, for example, with their big migration. You got to remember that people look at these events and think money, 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 money. Yeah, you know what I mean, guys? From that perspective, I always tell people, if you see a major event coming up that's just been announced or you understand that that major event might pump the price, don't buy it once it's happened. Buy it a little bit before and try to sell a little bit before the event actually occurs at latest the day before, depending on what the event is. If it's a hard fork, usually it's better to sell it um, afterwards purely because you actually get uh, very often the new tokens as well. Let's say, for example, with Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, me just holding Bitcoin gave me free Bitcoin Cash. And as of this point, I'm not so sure how much it's worth. But let's say that at the time, Bitcoin was worth $3,000. For every single Bitcoin that you held, you got yourself, you know, the same amount of Bitcoin Cash as well and Bitcoin SV and whatnot. Uh, there's a story behind every single one of those Bitcoins that came out at the time. A lot of scams as well with Bitcoin gold and whatnot. I'm not, I don't think I even actually claimed those because it was too sketchy to do so. I digress. So having said that, um, the more, yeah, I'm getting a little bit distracted sometimes here during these videos. It is very much worth it to then keep it because I think Bitcoin Cash gets like $3,000 at one point or another. I'm not 1,000% sure on that, but I think so. That means that for every one Bitcoin I had, you basically doubled your Bitcoin at one point or another for the, the time at the, you know, at that current time for just having it, if you guys get my drift. So um, the same thing goes for major hard forks. If you get the newer token as well and the old one doesn't become worthless, then it's very nice to keep holding through. But then you should always make sure you buy it a little ways up front because a lot of people will actually just buy and sell uh, buy the rumor and sell just below before it happens. And the same thing usually happens for quite a lot of other things, which I'm going to describe to you guys in multiple different of my videos. Uh, I also will make some exclusive videos purely. It's not for exclusive people. It's just exclusive as in I'll make some separate videos explaining some strategies to maybe make some crazy amount of money from these different waves that I've recognized and we talk about um, within our crypto groups. So yeah, look out for that. Uh, but here's one of them. Another one is basically to try and buy a utility token, very often exchange tokens, just before or while some new things are announced, like, for example, um, token launches on launch pads, for example, and then selling them. Any launch pad basically has a scenario like that where it's very often an easy way to make money. And then our last little article here, I don't want to talk about the crypto. You can see the name a little bit right there. I just want to tell you guys, if you ever read this, these types of articles just know you're most likely getting scammed if you're not then i would never ever ever recommend 
to go balls deep into something like this. If you want to tread the waters, try it with a little bit of money because it might work. Hey, yeah, it, it is true. It might work. But the risk doesn't outweigh the... Re um, no, the reward doesn't outweigh the risk. It's like you're going to throw money into a garbage bin and hope some homeless man inside there is actually not a homeless man but a leprechaun who gives you money. It's possible. It's plausible. No, not really. It's possible. Let's put it like that. But it's not most likely not going to happen. And that's why I'm always saying... If you see things like this, it's, it's it can happen, but it's a small chance. So if you're ever going to threat those waters again, try it with little money, not crazy amounts of money is my honest um, opinion about those matters. Again, it's not financial advice because at the end of the day, I don't know, right? You might make crazy amounts of money with it. You might lose everything. But I'm just saying it's not worth it usually. And again, these are fun stories because I've heard this about a thousand, maybe more times that a certain crypto will destroy a certain ecosystem. It's possible, yet again. But not every crypto can do every time. You know, not every crypto can do destroying basically of the entire ecosystem every time. So them saying it means nothing to me either necessarily. It depends on what they've shown me. And this thing I've never heard of before really. So I'm not really too excited about it. But hey, at the end of the day, we shall see pretty soon. I have a little bit of news on, um, on this here over on the top, right? Crypto Twitter reacts as Russian government reviews finalized crypto bill. But I think I want to make a separate video about everything that's going on in there, as it's a long story. So if you guys are excited about that, make sure you press the like button, and I'll see you guys again in another crypto video later today. And uh, that was it for today. Adios, amigos. Have a nice one.